Our next speaker is Josh Robbins. He is a sexual health activist and runs an HIV blog and a YouTube channel named I Am Still Josh. Welcome to the stage, Josh. So how's everyone? So I'm kind of interactive or I get bored because I know what I'm going to talk about. So how are y'all doing? Everything good? Good, 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 good. So patient centricity is lip service. And patients know it. Uh-oh. So my name is Josh Robbins. I am a sexual health activist primarily about HIV, and uh, I was diagnosed on January 24th, 2012. And on this day, February 9th, 2012, I told the world that I was living with HIV on uh, social media. Something that was interesting is that I, I don't know how interesting or not it was, but I videoed uh, being diagnosed, and then I posted it, so it's recorded live, and I posted it on YouTube. So at that time, I'm not some weird person that was just like, oh, this is the worst thing in my life, so I'm gonna like video it and then try to like monetize it or something. Uh, what I wanted to do was share a moment with the world that uh, was probably the worst day in my life, but this is something that patients experience all the time. I also have a blog, it's called I'm Still Josh, and the whole concept behind it is, I'm still me, you still be you, even though I'm living with HIV. I will tell you, and I'll brag a little bit, if you don't mind, can I brag? Yeah. It just won the National Lesbian Gay Journalist Association's uh, Excellence in Blogging Award for this year. <laughs> so being patient-centric, that's a buzz phrase that you guys have been uh, heard and been, you know, it's been important to you guys for a couple of years, right? Right? Yes, yes, okay. I know, because I've been to some of these conferences and people talk about it all the time. Patient centricity, that new buzzword. And this is what it kind of looks like. And I'm gonna need your help a little bit, but in the center of that model is patient, uh, being patient-centric is the patient, right? And then all these other circles kind of around the outside of it are the different departments at pharmaceutical companies. <laughs> like research and development, and what are some of the other departments? Marketing and, I mean, y'all work there, what, what departments are there? <laughs> yeah, okay, legal, there you go. Uh, regulatory, ew, I'm, I'm with you there. Uh, so this is what the model looks like, right? As a linear model, this is what it looks like too. So the small circle there, is the beginning of a project or a product or, or something great. And the very end is the communication of that product and making it, or, or initiative and making it go live. And being patient-centric is right in the center. What's the problem with that? Those parts. Because by definition, patient-centric means the center. So when a, a, a linear model of these projects means the patient's not involved at the beginning, and the patient isn't involved at the end, right? So that's what it looks like. That's what it should look like. Being patient infused. So I'm introducing a new concept to you guys today called patient infused. And what that means is all your departments that are around there. Did you find your department? <laughs> that the patient has to be involved in that. And it's really important that we are. And the reason that it's important Besides me being cute in that photo, I just threw that in there because I like that photo. It has nothing to do with the talk today. But there are other health conditions uh, that, uh, that have advocates that are just like me. So I'm here talking to you just as an HIV activist, but there are people like Kathy Elton with What Would Kathy Eat? Sue Rebricha, so Diabetes Rambling, Natasha Bracey, she's the bipolar purple blog. Adam Sled, substance use, and then this woman, Lisa Dasis with multiple sclerosis. Now I'm gonna tell you a little story about her. She's kinda of cool. She has a blog called MS Lisa Says. 
I mean, it's just cute. You get it, like Miss Lisa says, Ms. Lisa said. <laughs> That's my mom. It's a great blog, right? Yeah. So I told my mom, I convinced her um, 15, I don't know, 15 years ago, my mom was on her death couch. And I say death couch because she was so tired that she couldn't even get to the bed to die. But when I was diagnosed with HIV and she's so persistent and I'm so proud of her, I said, Mom, why don't you start a blog like my blog? And maybe you could get an award. Now, trying to teach my mom how to like blog was not good. Now, my mom is like a rock star and uh, her blog content is like way better than mine. Really undervalued. Uh, but she is somebody that I'm really proud of. And last year, in December of last year, she climbed to the top. She trained all year, but she climbed to the top of a rock climbing wall. That's awesome, right? Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, uh, mom is gonna love me for like being, talking to you guys today about her. Um, the, my mom's story is real similar. I'm gonna go back. My mom's story is real similar to mine, where we didn't. We just started talking about what we knew, which was living with a health condition, just like the other bloggers and other influencers that I that I showed earlier. The opportunity that you all in the room have are to engage us to infuse your projects with our perspectives. We are supposed to be patient centric. Right in your pro in your program or your products or your launches, uh, now patient infused because of today. But my mom, I, I, it's weird. She, I can't say that it's because of blogging and opening her life up on social media that she got off the death couch. But I can tell you that it's highly coincidental, and I can tell you there's a real power for patients that open up their lives and share it with other people. And that is an opportunity that everyone in this room has with people like me, but in every single health condition. We are literally alive because of you in this room. We'll get back to that. But we are dying to get involved with pharma with what you're doing because it's for us, right? And we understand that and we appreciate it. The other thing is that most of us in the uh, the, the influencer blogging space, we also have something called HON code, which is Health on Net. It's a third party accreditation. That means our health content is accurate. It's the same accreditation that WebMD, Healthline, and some of the other major uh, health information platforms go through. So I go through that accreditation every year because I want my content to be recognized as health accurate and to be patient infused. You get it? You get it? Yeah. Awesome. So patient infused, that's supposed to be your hands there because I'm like, everybody wants to be patient infused. Now, how do we get there? How do we as, um, I'm just like putting myself in, in the room with you guys, how do we as pharma marketers or pharma companies or social media platforms like, or, or smart tech companies, how do we become patient infused? And there's three ways. On the concept engagement level, at the very beginning, when you're coming up with the idea, with the ideation of whatever, whatever your initiative is, your program, your product, whatever, include us. Ask our opinion. What do we need? What do we want? What is something that, that is not currently available to patients that we want? Because we want to tell you. Next is consulting decisions. You know, I got invited to the White House once because I asked to go. Like, no, this is a true story. During the Obama administration, I asked, I went to a listening session, and I said, hey, I want to come, and I want to sit at the major table that decisions are made from the federal level about HIV. And they were like, okay. I was like, really? <laughs> they said, yeah. I was like, do I have to pay to come, or did y'all you know, do that too? I had to pay. Uh, <laughs> and I missed my flight, which was terrible, but I still made it. I was 30 minutes late, so I'm kind of like, a little boss that I rolled up to the White House 30 minutes late. <laughs> the point is, is that consulting decisions, that I wanted to be involved in the real decision making. So whoever those people are at your companies that make the decision, whoever that final person is, that's who we want to be in the room with. Because we want to help make those decisions. So that's the second way. The third way is communication expertise. We have communicators in the room. Yes, the PR people. 
Yes, no. Uh, I love those people. We want to be involved in the communication of what you want to do as well. And we've all seen the mistakes happen when somebody accidentally ticks off an entire community. It happens a lot in the HIV space. And it's because we have the opportunity to be involved in that decision making and the communication of whatever that is, because we have expertise in it, but no one's asked us to be there yet, right? So those are the three ways. Patient infused. I want to take this opportunity real quick to just pause and say, you guys are saving our lives. You guys are literally saving our lives in any health condition. And I just want to say thank you. Pharma gets a bad rap sometimes. And the reputation is not always great, specifically in the HIV community. But I'm somebody that just wanted to say thank you, right? So clap for yourselves. Because that's the end of my talk, and I wanted to applaud. So I'll see you later. Thanks.